Welcome to the training for pillar number one of the Microsoft K-12 Education Transformation Framework, Leadership and Policy. Leadership and Policy is about envisioning and creating an intentional culture of innovation and learning with shared goals that engage the community and motivate leaders, educators, and all stakeholders to plan and lead change through collaboration. We are going to talk about four areas under leadership and policy. That is vision for change, strategic planning and change management, continuous improvement and culture, and community engagement and partnerships. Just imagine a school where leaders and educators operate autonomously with a clear vision and transformational goal. A system driven by policy with no surprises, stakeholders are proactive, informed, and prepared to solve all problems as they come. A system where educators and learners embrace growth mindset, acknowledging challenges and facing them without fear of failing. And a school that has involved community with shared goals and lots of great ideas. In this course, you will learn to build the foundation for your school with the latest in leadership and policy. Deep and sustainable transformation of the education system happens only with the support of people at every level and partners, schools, local authorities, universities, teacher training colleges, and national governments. The outcomes of transformation include an inclusive vision representing the aspirations of students, teachers, leaders, and the community. Strategic implementation plans and strategies that support the transition. A positive system culture embracing change through a growth mindset. And lastly, community partners and school stakeholders working together toward a common goal. Objectives for this course include Developing a school-driven vision that represents the aspirations of learners, educators, and the community. Creating a strategic implementation plan or implementation plans. Identifying strategies and tactics to support stakeholder groups through the transition. Building a positive system, culture, embracing change through a growth mindset, and devising a plan for community partners and school stakeholders to work together on a common goal. Let's start with Module 1, Vision for Change, the first area under leadership and policy. For your school, you need to build a shared vision that includes the aspirations and needs of all stakeholders. To remain current, the vision should be a flexible living document that evolves with technology and end user needs. Today, students will graduate into a world with we do not know yet, and into a workforce that demands skills for jobs that don't yet exist. Now, how then can we best serve these students? The answer is that we must equip them with, to be lifelong learners by anticipating the future through research and studies and channeling this knowledge into everyday classroom, educators serve the next generation of students. One thing you need to do is read the Class of 2030 white paper available in the link below or in Educator Center, in the Microsoft Educator Center. Go to Showcase Schools Program and go to the Microsoft K-12 ETF or Education Transformation Framework and find Class of 2030 white paper and read the study there. This study focuses on four themes, teaching practices of the future, including the skills and attitudes teachers will need to develop. The second focus is the role of technology inside and outside of the classroom and the perceived benefits, concerns, and barriers of using technology. The third focus is future working conditions and available resources, which covers how teachers are val valued by society and how that impacts their well-being. Lastly, it also focuses on the demographic trends of both teachers and students. Progress happens and it happens more quickly than in the past. 
with digital tools serving the purpose of a clear vision, focus, and specific learning goals. Now you need to answer or ask yourself which digital tools may best serve in your purpose of a clear vision focused on specific learning goals. Tools that support personalized learning approaches will elevate rather than diminish the critical role of the teacher, and that is you. Indeed, teaching as a profession is projected to grow by 3 to 9% in the next decade. Teaching will shift to a coaching model as technology advances, allowing teachers to spend less time on routine tasks, giving them more time and new ways to understand and interact with their students. As you read the report, the Class of 2030 white paper, consider your own vision for change. Let's watch this video to understand more on how an elementary school provides engaging content to their students. Hi baby, good morning. It's our job as teachers to find the ways and the tools for personalized learning. We're unique and we're different, so we're not all going to learn the same way. Personalized learning in my classroom looks like everyone doing the same task, but in a different way. Miss Grace is amazing. She's the best reading teacher in the whole world. Ah, <laughs> Miss Grace is, she's a great teacher. She'll go above and beyond figuring out what she can do and how she can tell her instruction for even just one kid. We really do our best to serve the whole child. I know that teaching is my purpose. It's why I was put on this earth. There's so many different ways the kids can learn things. There's no so one right way. Absolutely. Finding that way for that kid, and then it's off and running for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love class notebook. I've often thought, where has this been my whole entire teaching life? I'll put them together. Advice. Good job. I love how you do This that. tool is incredible. It helps my children become more organized. Everyone's engaged. Everyone feels successful. And that's certainly what I want for all of my children. I'm so proud of you. Good job, bud. The OneNote class notebook helped me because if I don't know some words, I just go to Immersive Reader and it can say it for me. Oh gosh, Immersive Reader has helped the comprehension in my classroom. I see better fluency, see better engagement, and the kids are taking more ownership. People who serve tend to forget about themselves, but it's so important that we take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. OneNote has given me the time back that I need for my own balance. And most of all, what I see are students who feel more confident in their own learning. Here are the things that you need to do as a leader. Number one, set up a personal education transformation framework OneNote notebook to support your work during this transformation process. Make notes and add links that you can reference later as you read pages 1 to 9 in the Class of 2030 white paper. Second, set up a Microsoft Team workspace for your education transformation framework project. Invite stakeholders to join. Then post the resource, the Class of 2030 and Life Ready Learning, the technology imperative for them to read. Post a question along with a resource to generate thinking and spark ideas and discussion around why a vision for change is needed. A sample question might be, before we as stakeholders can implement policies and approaches, we first need to agree on the problems that must be solved within our organization and position those problems for broad attention. What shifts does our organization need to make to ensure that learners and learning takes center stage? Then the fourth step is go back to pages one to nine in the class of 2030 white paper, and then ask which components stand out as needing to be addressed first by your organization. And then how does this align with stakeholder perspectives shared in your team's post? 
Note this in your education transformation framework notebook. These are the things that you need to do in order to build a vision for change in your school. Now create a plan to execute a work session with your stakeholders to develop a digital transformation vision. Then ask yourselves, does your vision support student-centered personalized learning? Does your vision prepare students for a constantly changing workforce? Does your vision support the development of social emotional skills? Does it support inclusive schools and classrooms? And finally, does your vision use technology to effectively support the vision? These are the critical questions you need to ask when building a digital transformation vision. Let's move on to module number two, strategic planning and change management. The second area under leadership and policy. Okay, test, test. Let's move on to module number two, strategic planning and change management. The second area under leadership and policy pillar of the Microsoft K-12 ETF. As a school leader, develop strategic implementation plans and identify strategies and processes to support stakeholder groups through the transition. A key component to an effective digital transformation vision should be clearly communicated and shared by all stakeholders so that momentum and impact are self-fulfilling. These include processes for effective management, develop monitoring process or practice systems to ensure continued growth or is occurring, and lastly monitor that all staff are implementing inclusion and accessibility tools and features to encourage the greatest possible learning outcomes. Before any work can happen, it is critical to identify the stakeholders who will help to both decide and execute the goals of the school system. So how do you do this? Number one, create a survey using Microsoft Forms for input from school leaders, educators, parents, community leaders, and other contributors who are considered important stakeholders for input on student technology needs that align to the vision. For a more comprehensive result, use the Microsoft Transformation Survey, which aligns to Microsoft's Education Transformation Framework. The figure or the image that you see there is the ETF or Education Transformation Assessment Tool. This is available in the Educator Center. All the links that we have posted in this video will be pasted also in the description below. As globalization and rapid achievements or advancements in technology continue to transform civic space and the world of work, education systems have grown increasingly disconnected from the realities and needs of global economies and societies. In the context of job disruption and increased polarization, primary and secondary school systems have a critical role to play in preparing the global citizens and workforces of the future. Education models must adapt to equip children with the skills they need to create a more inclusive, more cohesive, and productive world. The Schools of the Future, written by the World Economic Forum, outlines a framework for shifting learning experiences to meet the needs of the fourth industrial revolution. So the second thing you need to do is read the Schools of the Future. The key findings of the Schools of the Future include eight critical characteristics in learning content and experiences that have been identified to define high-quality learning in the fourth industrial revolution called Education.4.0. Number one is the global citizenship skills. This includes content that focuses on building awareness about the wider world, sustainability, and playing an active role in the global community. The second one is innovation and creativity skills. This includes content that fosters skills required for innovation, including complex problem solving, analytical thinking, creativity, and systems analysis. The third critical characteristic is technology skills. This includes content that is based on developing digital skills, including programming, digital responsibility, and the use of technology. 
The fourth characteristic is interpersonal skills. It includes content that focuses on interpersonal, emotional intelligence, including empathy, cooperation, negotiation, leadership, and social awareness. Fifth critical characteristic is personalized and self-paced learning. Move from a system where learning is standardized to one based on the diverse individual needs of each learner and flexible enough to enable each learner to progress at their own pace. The sixth critical characteristic is accessible and inclusive learning. Move from a system where learning is confined to those with access to school buildings to one in which everyone has access to learning and is therefore inclusive. The seventh critical characteristic is problem-based and collaborative learning. You need to move from process-based to project and problem-based content delivery, requiring peer collaboration and more closely monitoring or mirroring the future of work. And the last but not the least critical characteristic is lifelong and student-driven learning. You need to move from a system where learning and skilling decrease over one's lifespan to one where everyone continuously improves on existing skills and acquires new ones based on their individual needs. Through a global crowdsourcing campaign, the World Economic Forum identified 16 examples of schools, education programs, and school systems that are paving the way toward Education 4.0, as defined above, based on the uniqueness of their approach, demonstrated impact, and geographical diversity. These examples are meant to serve as inspiration for the shift towards a more holistic transformation of education systems globally. The next thing is about ISTE standards for education leaders. This targets the knowledge and behaviors required for leaders to empower teachers and make student learning possible. They are focused on some of the most timely yet enduring topics in education today. Equity, digital citizenship, visioneering, team and systems building, continuous improvement, and professional growth. Let's find out what ISTE standards for education leaders are. Number one, equity and citizenship advocate. Leaders use technology to increase equity, inclusion, and digital citizenship practices. Education leaders must ensure all students have skilled teachers who actively use technology to meet student learning needs. Then they must ensure all students have access to the technology and connectivity necessary to participate in authentic and engaging learning opportunities. Education leaders must also model digital citizenship by critically evaluating online resources, engaging in civil discourse online, and using digital tools to contribute to positive social change. And lastly, leaders must cultivate responsible online behavior, including safe, ethical, and legal use of technology. The second standard for education leaders under ISDE is Visionary Planner. These are leaders who engage others in establishing a vision, strategic plan, and ongoing evaluation cycle for transforming learning with technology. Here, education leaders engage education stakeholders in developing and adopting a shared vision for using technology to improve student success informed by the learning sciences. Leaders build on the shared vision by collaboratively creating a strategic plan that articulates how technology will be used to enhance learning. They must evaluate progress on the strategic plan, make course corrections, measure impact, and scale effective approaches for using technology to transform learning. They must communicate effectively with stakeholders to gather input on the plan, celebrate successes, and engage in continuous improvement cycle. And the last one is they must share lessons learned, best practices, challenges, and the impact of learning with technology with other education leaders who want to learn from this work. The third standard for education leaders is empowering the leader. Empowering leaders mean they create a culture where teachers and learners are empowered to use technology in innovative ways to enrich teaching and learning. They must empower educators to exercise professional agency, build teacher leadership skills, and pursue personalized professional learning. They must build the confidence and competency of educators to put these standards for students and educators into practice. They must also inspire a culture of innovation and collaboration that allows time and space to explore and experiment with digital tools. They must support educators in using technology to advance learning that meets the diverse learning, cultural, and social-emotional needs of individual students. 
They must also develop learning assessments that provide a personalized, actionable view of student progress in real time. The next standard for education leaders is systems designer. Leaders build teams and systems to implement, sustain, and continually improve the use of technologies to support learning. Leaders must lead teams to collaboratively establish robust inf infrastructure and systems needed to implement the strategic plan. They must ensure that resources for supporting the effective use of technology for learning are sufficient and scalable to meet future demand. They must also protect privacy and security by ensuring that students and staff observe effective privacy and data management policies. And lastly, they must establish partnerships that support the strategic vision, achieve learning of priorities, and improve operations. The last standard for education leaders under ISD is connected learners. These are leaders who model and promote continuous professional learning for themselves and others. They must set goals to remain current on emerging technologies for learning, innovations in pedagogy, and advancements in the learning sciences. These leaders must participate regularly in online professional learning networks to collaboratively learn with and mentor other professionals. They must use technology to regularly engage in reflective practices that support personal and professional growth, and lastly, they must develop the skills needed to lead and navigate change, advance systems, and promote a mindset of continuous improvement for how technology can improve learning. Using the ISD standards for education leaders and key findings from the Schools of the Future article, you must identify strategies and processes necessary to support stakeholder groups through the transition. That's the third thing you need to do. The fourth is that in your education transformation framework notebook, create an outline for a strategic plan based on the key ISD standards for education leaders, components of a visionary leader. Consider how you lead your organization in developing a strategic plan for change management based on this outline, where learners and learning take center stage. As a reflection, now that you have an outline, how will you generate stakeholder buy-in? These are the questions you need to reflect on. What support needs are unique to your stakeholder group based on the information you have today? How will you provide this support to individuals and groups? Second, consider how a collaborative platform like Microsoft Teams will provide a space for stakeholders to share, ask questions, and iterate on a digital transformation plan. Note this in your educational transformation framework notebook. And lastly, vision and mission of the school should be well communicated and ingrained with all stakeholders. Trust but verify that all policies are in place and working effectively. Continue to adjust as needed to streamline or problem solve for new issues that arise. Let's go to the third module of Leadership and Policy, Continuous Improvement and Culture. As the education leader, continuously monitor progress and measure results while fostering a culture of organic growth, improvement, collaboration, and innovation. To truly usher an impactful change, leaders must transform behaviors both learning behaviors of students and teaching behaviors of staff. Education leaders at all levels can benefit from applying the planning, monitoring, and evaluation cycle and outcomes-based planning and evaluation to education transformation initiatives. Monitoring and evaluating can help education transformation programs define and measure quality indicators and measures of the education transformation process gauge progress toward desired educational outcomes, increase stakeholder participation, and empower school leaders and teachers to build and sustain transformation in schools. This is from Fresno Personalized Learning Initiative Year One Report. If our students are to thrive beyond school, they will need evidence of their creative, social, collaborative, analytical, and digital competencies. As you read Fresno Unified, The Future's Challenge and 21C or 21st Century Learning Design, consider 
why having a plan in place for ongoing process or ongoing progress monitoring and measuring results while fostering a culture of organic growth, improvement, collaboration and innovation is key to student and organizational success. This document is available on this link, but will also be available in the description below. Rethinking school education strategy is imperative to growth toward behavioral change. Many policies around the world focus on improving teachers and teaching. Relatively few are driven by a behavioral change strategy. Improving children's learning is much more than simply changing the level at which they learn. It is changing entirely their learning behaviors at school, in the classroom, and at home. This becomes even more important if the growing focus on the 21st century skills, complemented by significant technological change in the classroom, is to truly transform the way children learn. Improving teaching requires teaching practices or behaviors in schools to change. It is impossible to change education without changing teaching practices. Therefore, almost by definition, improving teaching is a behavioral change process. High-performing education systems lead by applying a behavioral change strategy, the parameters of which are determined by the evidence base. This nuanced approach profoundly impacts the effectiveness of the strategy at all levels of education. While previous decades saw a host of policy interventions fail to reflect, and in some cases substantially contradict, the evidence, there is now a greater focus on evidence-based policy. Improving teachers and teaching is the most productive reform that policymakers can implement. An effective change strategy focuses on organizational change and individual behaviors. At its core, it focuses on implementation and alignment because the strategy must detail how behaviors will change. The next one is that learning has shifted from a focus of knowing to a focus of doing. Students are now required to engage in more analytical thinking and innovation while expressing creativity, initiative, and emotional intelligence. Now, how can student growth and progress in these critical skills be, be measured? In which of the growing skills are students actively engaging? So after reading Fresno Unified, the Futures Challenge and 21C Learning Design, consider your organization's current plan for measuring continuous growth or continuous improvement. So one of the things you need to do is to develop a plan for monitoring and ensuring continuous improvement. Consider measuring both opportunities for professional development and impacts on student learning. Do you have an ongoing plan for developing teacher leader capacity? How will you measure growth? And consider reaching out to Microsoft for support in developing a solid plan for continuous improvement, data collection and analysis and with building teacher leader capacity with synchronous trainings and asynchronous online courses through the Microsoft Educator Center. Here are reflections that you can make. Consider your organization's capacity for implementing and teaching students the tools required to meet the learning needs of the class 2030. Reflect on these questions. What is included in your organization's current plan for continuous improvement? What are you measuring and monitoring? What is working in your school? What needs to change? And then what support or training can Microsoft provide? Note this in your education transformation framework notebook. Let's move on to module four, community engagements and partnerships. The last area under leadership and policy pillar. You must continuously enable effective transformation through community engagement and a coalition of partners with complementary com competencies and knowledge. Let's talk about PPE, P, or Public-Private Educational Partnership, and how will this impact learning outcomes? PPEPs, or Public-Private Educational Partnerships, are contractual relationships between governments and private sector entities. They are catalysts for systemic change. PPEPs mobilize individuals, organizations, and communities, tapping the power of education. 
They combine transformational leadership, shared goals, and community values to create educational access, equity, outcomes, quality, and ethical choices. Digital technologies are an integral strategy in this transformation, driven by a community for innovation that harnesses the human imagination and creativity for changing lives, organizations, communities, and nations. PPEPs are also pillars of social, cultural, and economic empowerment in the developing world. PPEPs have shown to be effective across the globe in impacting learning outcomes of increasing enrollments, improving educational outcomes, reducing educational inequality, and reducing costs. How we start our day matters. Hey, good morning. I want that eyeball to eyeball opportunity every single morning with every single child. It's just a really fun school. And to be the first person to come in here is like a good opportunity. This is day 20 with students, and what Microsoft brings to education is second to none. Eric, how about if you tell us just a bit about the campus? Any advice or thoughts for others that are going through that same process? Anytime you have partners like a Microsoft is amazing. I mean, we're looking for all sorts of partners. Unlike most cities at 100,000 population or less, to have an art institute, a music institute, an amazing public library, a planetarium, all on the campus, those are great learning experiences. So it's important to me that my staff lets kids create. Right now we're learning how to play the violin. I don't think of myself as that good yet, but if I strive for perfection, then I think I'll become good. When thinking about technology, it's only one piece of the puzzle. They've used active learning spaces to support student-centred approaches to learning. Our hope and dream is that we can create best practices that will be role models for every new school creation all around the world. We love that our students are using tools that they'll use in industry, like Teams and Skype and Flipgrid. But then also the vision of the school and the vision of Microsoft are aligned because the foundation of a school is built around having an environment where students can come in and feel safe. Working with Microsoft that has a similar philosophy on education, we're going to continue to grow, develop that mindset that anything is possible and that we're all in this together. I understand because I'm from Flint. Don't let anybody tell you that just because you're from Flint, Michigan, or wherever city, that you can't be somebody that you know you can be. I'm going to be that person that really cares about you. No matter what, maybe you will mess up one day. That's fine, we're all gonna have bad days. You're gonna come here every day, we're gonna have a fresh start, and you're important to me. I've never been to a school like this ever, and it actually feels like my home now. Community, indeed, is a journey. How can leaders address varying definitions and understandings of innovation across PPEPs? There is a misconception that innovation is synonymous with technology. Innovation, in fact, exists along a continuum that includes much more than just hardware and software. Innovation is thinking and creativity. Innovation is new policies, processes, procedures, curriculum, pedagogical practices, and more. School transformation requires synergy among the stakeholders. That's educators, government and ministry leaders, students, faculty, private providers, social service organizations, religious leaders, parents, and more. Indeed, what we should be developing in PPEPs are communities for innovation that collectively embrace innovation in all its guises and creative capacities. Digital technologies create a vast continuum of creative teaching and learning tools for the educative process. In PPEPs, there is one common value to which all partners must commit. The power of education to transform lives, communities, institutions, and nations. Local businesses and nonprofit agencies can also be part of the vision to further student experience and bring the real world into the classroom. Here are things that you need to do. Make a list in your notebook. Form a committee within your school of teachers, parents, and students to work towards actively engaging with local companies and nonprofits. Then, what are your system's most important engagement values? 
And how will you make sure these values are reflected in the engagement process? When meeting with community partners, engage in the following activity. First, triangle. First, have participants draw a triangle and next to it, write down three important points from the presentation or reading they just saw or completed, or write down items that need more clarification. The second activity is square. Have participants draw a square and next to it, write down anything that squares with their thinking or anything they agree with. The third activity is circle. Finally, have your participants draw a circle and next to it, write down anything that is still circling in their head or the questions that they have. Use this exercise to help stimulate thinking, ask thorough questions, and help with final decision making. When forming community partnerships, it is important to remember the keyword, partnership. This is different than donations or school support. Partnerships mean both sides benefit. Clarifying partnership expectations is key to a successful endeavor. Consider businesses and organizations that can support internships, mentorships, projects, and connections that impact the community, achieving authentic learning. Be open to all community resources, no matter how small, that could provide opportunities to prepare your students for their futures. Reflect on these. Launching a successful public-private educational partnership requires leaders to establish a commitment to developing a long-term plan that actively works to engage the community. How well will you accurately anticipate future trends and their consequences, bring creative ideas to fruition, recognize strategic opportunities for change, and create competitive and breakthrough strategies? And then how does this align to your school's vision? Note all these in your Education Transformation Framework Notebook. This is the end of the Leadership and Policy, first pillar of the Microsoft K-12 Education Transformation Framework. If you have any questions, email us at info at cts.ae.